Electronics 101 video. Uh, this is all about capacitors. Uh, there are several types. Uh, there are ceramic, which are used in this case in the battery packs for smooth and filtering, making sure there's no spikes or too much uh, voltage coming out of these things to fry your components that you hook them up to. Uh, tantalum, which look like kind of like little envelopes or pills or gum. And then you have the electrolytic ones, which looks like cans. And then this one is a variable capacitor, so that you can actually move the plates closer and overlap more or less, depending on how much capacitance you want. Now, capacitors are typically used for, like I said before, smoothing power, making sure there's no spikes to blow up a processor, or too much voltage to burn out an LED, maybe. Uh, you can pull direct current down to uh, ground if it's got alternating current that seems to have bumped the signal up in amplitude. You want to drop that down again so you don't overpower anything further down the circuit. Um, let's see, so there, the uh, storage is measured in farads. Uh, this one is a 0 0.02 microfarad and they go all the way up here to... 4,700 microfarad, and that's a big old chunky boy right there. But these things can get huge, uh, like the ones on my air conditioner are about the size of a soda can. So, uh, typically another use for them, oh, before I get to that though, uh, these ones, as opposed to resistors, which will work either way, they're non-polarized, no positive, no negative, uh, some capacitors, you can see, do need to be... Uh, positioned in the circuit correctly. Uh, this one does not matter. This one will work either way, NP, non-polarized. Uh, but if you put these in backwards, it could blow them up. Uh, definitely going to kill them, burn a hole in there. You'll have voltage leakage. It'll do all kinds of weird stuff to your circuit. Uh, so basically what it is, is uh, let's say metal fingers on one side, which will then interlock with metal fingers on another side. Hold this for me, please. So you'll have positive side like that and the negative side coming in like that. But the layers will not touch, but they'll be very close. And in between, they'll have like the electrolytic uh, uh, compound, or it'll have uh, something as simple as like a plastic sheet. Just making sure that they don't touch exactly. In this case, it's air gapped. But eventually, the voltage will have enough power to push through that. So what it does in the meantime is it just builds that charge up, up, and up, and up. And then eventually, once it's full, uh, if it's wired right, it'll then dump all that into the rest of the circuit. And here is it a good example of that. So we want to power up this LED. Um, but we don't want to use this power source directly. So we'll say, we'll pretend that this power source is actually... Uh, solar panel that's out in some nice bright light. It's going to have a bank of batteries or uh, capacitors or supercapacitors which are then charging up with that and then dumps it through the LED and lights it up. Quick charge, quick discharge. Now if we added some more resistors in there to slow it down it, the light would stay bright or it would stay on longer and you would see it gradually decrease, whereas this one is very little resistance, uh, but there are baby resistors hidden inside these things. Uh, 30 ohms, maybe 300? Itsy bitsy. So we charge and discharge, just like that. And you'll notice that these components also have these symbols on there. That's the schematic symbol for a battery. Uh, the symbol for the capacitor and the symbol for the LED with the light emitting out. So if you wanted to draw it without all the extra stuff on there, there's our battery charging up our capacitor. And then we moved that capacitor to this circuit, which then went through the internal resistor hidden inside the LED housing in this plastic bit here, and lit up like that. 